This is the show for those of you who have been climbing in a climbing wall for perhaps a couple of weeks or months. You've been hiring shoes, you've been hiring harnesses, and it's time to get rid of all that secondhand kit and get some of your own. But what do you need? Before we get into that though, let's talk a bit about entering climbing walls. How do you get from that stage where you're outside, pressed up against the glass looking in, to when you're there being a climber and climbing? Now, most climbing walls require some kind of signing in process. And it's all a lot easier if you go to a, a bouldering specific climbing wall. Now with bouldering, there's not often complex rope work to learn and other safety features, so it can be a bit quicker. Sometimes you have to watch a little video telling you about safety tips, like not walking underneath each other and be careful when you jump from the top. And sometimes you need to fill in a form. Be careful of that form. Some of the boxes require a yes, some a no, some a tick, some a cross. It has to be specific. So take your time to read that form so you don't look like a bit of a wally. Now I'm telling you that bouldering is safer than rope climbing, but that is actually a little bit misleading. Bouldering, you tend to fall off or jump off from the top of the wall or fairly high up. Yep, you land onto mats, but trust me, I have seen so many accidents take place in climbing walls and especially bouldering walls. You have to be careful. Just because it's bouldering doesn't make it safe. Make sure you climb down from the top of the wall instead of jumping down. If you go to a rope climbing gym, or even a gym where it has a mix of bouldering and rope climbing, you'll have to sign a few more forms and jump through some more hoops. Why? Well, you have to know the proper knot, belay situation, and how to put on a harness properly. If you don't know those things, it's gonna get very dangerous. Every climbing wall has a different method for ensuring that you're safe. The one I used to work at back in London, we used to do a safety test, so I'd watch them uh, tie in, belay, do a harness, all that stuff, and then I'd make a judgment call. Sometimes it's done on a video. I had one where you had to look at a video and then spot the mistakes the climber made. Basically, every wall is a little bit different and you have to play it by ear when you arrive there. At the end of the day, if you're competent, then it shouldn't be a problem, but don't try to trick that system. I mean, sure, maybe you managed to fudge your way through the test by watching YouTube videos, but at the end of the day, it's your life. And if you don't know how to do this stuff properly, you might get hurt or you might hurt somebody else. And that is to be avoided. Okay, so you're in, you're in your climbing wall, you're ready to go climbing, you've had your rental shoes for a couple of weeks, and that is the first thing that I recommend for an upgrade. Rental shoes are usually the wrong size, they're a bit loose, they're full of other people's sweat, they've got holes in, they're not very nice to wear, and the sooner you upgrade, the better. This is the brand new Scarpa Veloz, and I think it's an absolute beauty. It looks like an advanced shoe, but it's actually aimed towards beginners, and let me explain why. Classically, beginner shoes have been stiff and flat, and the idea behind that is that beginners haven't got a strong feet, and they need a bit of support in the bottom of the sole to keep everything working properly and allow you to put more power down through the shoe. However, Scarpa have ripped up the rule book on this one. They reckon that most people starting out in the climbing world are gonna be climbing indoors on fairly overhanging routes with big holds that are quite slippery. Having a stiff, flat shoe is not gonna help you in that situation. So what they've done is they've taken the Veloce, they've made it a bit downturned, and they've used their S72 rubber in the shoe. Why is that special? Well, it's the softest in their range. So it's nice, malleable, and comfortable, and is good for overhangs. However, there's also four, four millimeters of rubber in this shoe, and that makes it quite durable. Because as a beginner, you're gonna spend a little bit of time kicking the wall and just scuffing it up a bit, and you want a shoe that's gonna last and not fall to bits. The other shoe to check out is the Black Diamond Momentum, and this is incredible value. It's around about 80 euros on the Epic TV shop. Again, soft, but more flat. So if something like this is a bit too aggressive for you, then that might be a good option to check out. If you're rope climbing, then you're gonna want your own harness because it's just so much more comfortable than those horrible rental ones. Now, I would personally recommend checking out some climbing sets. It's what I did when I first started climbing. I bought a package of a harness and other bits and bobs all together so I had everything I needed to go climbing. Check out the Osun, or Okun, or however you pronounce it, twist 
uh, climbing package. This comes with the twist harness, it comes with a carabiner, an ATC belay device, some chalk and a chalk bag, all for around 80 euros on the Epic TV shop. Now that is an absolute bargain. My climbing set lasted me for years. In fact, I've still got the carabiner and belay plate that I originally bought about nine years ago. So if you look after it, it's a great investment. And for that kind of a price, you can't beat it. Now this, what I'm showing you today is the women's version. There is a men's version and there are other sets on the Epic TV shop. So check it out and grab the one that feels good for you. Now there is chalk included in the set, but trust me, you're gonna need some more because you're gonna be using that every single time you climb. I would recommend looking at a chalk ball. Now chalk balls are chalk stuffed inside of a very fine mesh. So when you put it through your hands, when you touch it, when you rub it, that chalk comes through the mesh onto your hands. The reasons that's good is a lot of climbing walls nowadays are starting to restrict the loose chalk that you can bring in there. They don't like big buckets full of loose fluffy chalk, they want everything contained so it's not as messy and you don't breathe it in as much as a climber. The Petzl Powerball only costs three euros 20 on the Epic TV shop, so it's a nice good value package for your chalking needs. We have a variety of other stuff as well, but that is what I'd recommend for you guys getting into this sport. Now, I do think it is very important to have a rope at some point in your career. It means that you know what you've done to that rope, you can look after it properly, and you don't have that nagging thing in the back of your head where you worry about someone else's condition of their rope. But I wouldn't recommend you get a rope straight away. This is something that you'll build up to. You'll learn how to lead climb, for example, instead of top roping. And if you are just top roping a route, so that's with the rope leading up and through a carabiner at the top, then the gym will provide that. But if you're at that rope stage, then I would recommend getting something round about 10 millimeters in diameter. That's a fairly thick rope, but that does make it quite durable. And you want a rope that's gonna take some abuse. You wanna fall on it, drag it around, drag it around cities to different climbing walls. It needs to be strong. Check out the Tendon Smart Light 9.8 millimeter rope. This is 9.8 millimeters, as the name suggests. It's nice and thick, but it is still supple in your hands. It's also fantastically good value. Under 100 euros on the Epic TV shop by quite a way. So it's an absolute bargain. It's strong, it's tough, it handles great. It, it, it's a brilliant first climbing rope. It doesn't have a load of treatments built into it, but for more of an indoor rope, that's fine, it'll be okay. Definitely pick one of these bad boys up. There are, of course, a whole load of different kit that you can get for indoor climbing, but an essential, I think, is a brush. Why do you need a brush? Well, you know that chalk we chatted about earlier? That stuff gets absolutely everywhere, including into the grain of a climbing hold. When a climbing hole gets all chalked up and disgusting, it's very hard to hold onto. And if you just turn up, put a load of chalk on it, and then walk off, it's kind of considered bad etiquette. You should really brush those holes and get them ready for your ascent and whoever's coming after you. Now, Sublime is a fantastic company and I've used their brushes for a while, so I can personally recommend them. They cost four euros 60 on the Epic TV shop, so nice and cheap. And there are over 9,000 boar hair bristles in that head. Now, this company was started by Tom Randall, if you know climbing at all, you know that that man puts his kit through its paces and he's designed this to be pretty much unbreakable, which I agree with. In fact, the only reason I still don't have my brush and this isn't mine is because I lost it. Sorry, Tom. The final bit of essential gear that I wanna talk about is aimed directly at you boulderers out there. Now, obviously the chalk bag came with that set we were talking about earlier, but if you're a boulderer, you don't need all the extra stuff. You don't want the ATC or the harness and all that. You just want a big old chalk bucket like this one from Soil, which is called the Toms. This costs about 39-ish euros on the Epic TV shop, and it's basically a giant chalk bag. So. You fill up this with chalk, be careful not to spill it or your climbing wall will kill you. And then when you go bouldering, you can put both your hands into the chalk bucket, get your hands nicely sorted out, take them out, leaving all that mess inside, close it and off you go to your boulder. It sounds like a slightly frivolous thing to buy, but I 
do think it's brilliant. The amount of chalk that it can hold means you're not constantly filling it up. And because it's nice and heavy and sometimes weighted at the bottom, it means it doesn't tip over as much when you're leaving it on the mat. It's also got a whole load of great little pockets that you can put your brush in, your tape in, perhaps a little snack, and carry it all with you. That means that you can work your way around the climbing wall, doing all the circuits, doing all the boulders, and know that all of your kit that you need is right next to you and not shut away in some kind of a locker. This is the Sowheel version. There's also a good one from La Sportiva called the Boulder Chalk Bag. That's also 39 euros on the shop, so it is a bit of a bargain. And I love a chalk bucket, although I do, again, lose it all the time. So there you go, a few indoor climbing essentials and some tips on how to perform and behave in a climbing wall. I hope that helped. Please let me know down below if you've got different gear suggestions or if you found any of the information today useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.